the Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible also says that in the last days, Satan in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of his devices. Now, one of the things that Christians are supposed to be doing is that they are not to, supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices, especially in the last days where he has a bunch of false doctrine out there. So Christians are to be aware of what Satan's doing. So here's one interesting thing, what you're going to notice. In the last days, all right? You ready for this? Satan has... You ready? <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty wild right here. Satan has a son. Is that pretty wild? Oh no, I'm going to prove to you. I, you might, it's okay if you don't agree with the first few things. But I promise you this, in the last thing, you're going to agree with me. And I mean every Christian, including Billy Graham, he's going to have to believe in this. All right? So I'm going to show you, he does have a son. Yes, he does. But first, let's cover the, the big things first. And then the final thing that everyone will believe. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. It's going to get wild. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Something strange going on here. The Bible says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay, notice right here that the Bible says that the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety. Something happened at the Garden of Eden. There's something strange here. So people, they will take this as, yeah, that's right, Satan tricked Eve. But there's something more it alludes, these words. When Satan beguiled Eve through what? Subtlety. Be the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety. There's something more it's alluding right here. This is going to get interesting. <laughs> Look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3. Now this verse alone proves Satan does have a physical seed. This verse will prove he has a physical seed. You might say, why is that interesting, Pastor? Did you pay attention to the word? That's why the King James Bible word, it gave you a right word right here. Do you know what the word beguile means? Did you ever look up the word beguile before? Charm. Seduce. That's what the word means. It's not like, oh, I just tricked you. No, it's tricking through what? There's some kind of seduction some sort of seduction going on. Now, look at this. This is interesting. When you look at Genesis 3, and then we're going to read verse 15. Now, remember, after serpent beguiled Eve, so Genesis 3, 15, right after the serpent beguiled Eve, what did Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 say? Look at this one. This is interesting. And I, God's promising Eve this, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So excuse me, this is God speaking to the serpent. So God is speaking to Satan. I'm going to put enmity between Satan and the woman. Okay, I'm going to write this down. That way you can pay attention. Satan versus Eve seed. I kind of gave it away, but you're going to see it. So there's going to be enmity between. But look at this. Keep reading, verse 15. The and the woman. And between. So the enmity is not just Satan and Eve. It's what they represent. And between thy seed, Satan's seed. So Satan has a seed. And her seed. Eve has a seed. Now let me ask you this simple question. Eve seed, do you think it was metaphorical, uh, figurative, spiritual, or do you believe that this seed is physical? Yes, it is. The Bible, when it talks about Adam and Eve, 
Oh, here's a bigger evidence why it's not spiritual. The Lord just donned this on me. What did 1 Corinthians 15 say? 1 Corinthians 15 says that our spiritual seed is not from Adam and Eve. They said that's the lost man's condition. Meaning what? The physical. So it's definitely not spiritual. It's got to be physical. So when God is talking about seeds, then this one, following context, following context, Eve's seed and Satan's seed, then this is what? Ooh. Ooh. See that? That's why this verse really shows it's something physical. It really shows that. It really proves it's physical. Because if you switch it, don't switch it now, because we're following by what? The context of the verse. But let's look at something else also that's interesting. Look at Ezekiel 31, verse 19. Ezekiel 31. Ezekiel 31. Ezekiel 31, verse 19. <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. Look at Ezekiel 31, 19. What did the Bible say about Satan? That he was in the Garden of Eden, right? Thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Now, why would God connect Eden with Satan? Here's another interesting thing. Ser the serpent, Satan beguiled Eve to take the fruit. Yes? But look at this. When Satan beguiled Eve to take the fruit, look at this now. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? So God is speaking to Pharaoh. But this Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all right, look what he hears about. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, so it's talking about the Assyrian. But you're going to find out this Assyrian is a spiritual evil being. So that's Satan. But keep reading. The Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of a high stature. And his top was among the thick boughs. The water made him great. The deep set him on high with his rivers running around about his plants. Uh, verse 5, it describes about his trees, his branches. Verse 6, the fowls of heaven made their nests in his bough. Verse 7, he's fair in his greatness. Verse 8, the cedars in what? The garden of God cannot hide him. Oh, so this Assyrian, listen to this, this Assyrian who's described as a tree, he said the gardens of God cannot hide him. So that's not a physical Assyrian. This is who? who who's this Assyrian then at the gardens of God cannot hide him? It's Satan. But let's keep reading right here. So this ain't some physical king. This is some bad spiritual king. Satan. But keep reading. Verse 9. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all, look at this, all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Uh-oh. Whoa. Mind-blowing. Did you get that right here? Okay. So then there were other trees in Eden that were not as fair as a particular tree in that garden. What's that tree that was particularly very fair that Eve was beguiled through? Oh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan is likened to what? That particular tree. How about that? Ain't that something? That Bible will blow your mind, man. That book will blow your mind. Satan is that tree. Satan is that tree. And that's what Eve was what? Beguiled from. We all agree, everyone agrees, serpent beguiled Eve to partake of the fruit. But you see right here, sir, the, Satan is represented as that fruit, as that tree. But it even gets even more interesting right here. Let's keep reading. Look at Proverbs chapter 30, uh, 30 and Revelation 17. We're going to connect these two. Look at Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30 and Revelation 17. Proverbs 30 and Revelation 17. 
Man, I got so many verses here, so this video is going to kind of go a little long, so I better wrap this up quickly. Look at Revelation 17. And that not that book amazing, man? That book is amazing. It will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. Look at Revelation chapter 17, and we will look at Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs 30 and Revelation chapter 17. So, how did Eve obviously eat the tree? With her mouth, right? Her mouth had to partake in what? Her mouth had to partake in this particular fruit of Satan. But what you're going to find out right here, that this mouth, which she ate, the Bible says she ate, so eating, what you're going to find out here that with her mouth that she eat of the fruit, that the Bible shows that this part particular inc instance where the eating of the mouth is, we're going to come now to the spiritual case, spiritually presented as fornication and as sexual encounters. Look at Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth... And wipe her, wipeth with her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. Interesting. This woman eats with her mouth, but who is she represented it as? An adulterous woman. The Bible connects some the Bible connects eating with the mouth with fornication. Let's also keep reading Revelation 17 now. Revelation 17, verse 1 through 2. Revelation 17, verse 1 through 2. When you eat your mouth the devil's fruit, God considers that as fornication in his eyes. Look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had, which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great who? Whore. So God considers her a whore, fornication, that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have what? committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made what see the eating of the mouth drunk with the wine of her fornication god connects a lot of sexual encounters with partaking with the mouth the lord does that that's why it's going to make sense that look at john chapter 8 now john chapter 8 so here's where everyone's going to believe me. Everyone's going to believe me. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. So this is where everyone's going to agree with me. Look at John chapter 8. That's why what happened in this encounter? In this encounter, what happened? God considers this as intermingling. That Satan, what? He produced children. And he has a son. This thing, this, there's no doubt, this particular transaction that was made produced children for Satan. And that's why people today are children of Satan through this particular transaction that happened. That's why say, you, if you are not saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, this title that Satan has a son is you, sir, and you, ma'am, if you are not saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 8 and verse 44. Notice the Bible says, Ye are of your father the devil. But it's so interesting. It connects sexual things again. And what? The lusts of your father he will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not on the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh the lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it you know who this title is it is you sir who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation you are not saved but it gets even worse for you look at second look at first John look at first John it gets even worse now at 1st John. We're going to look at 1st John and 2nd Thessalonians 2. 2nd Thessalonians 2 and 1st John. Here we go. It's going to get even deeper now. Here we go. The Antichrist, he is pictured to be Jesus Christ. 
Jesus, why? Because he's supposed to imitate, mimic Jesus Christ, but he's a false representation. Jesus Christ is what? The Son of God. <clears throat> Likewise, it would follow the Antichrist is who? The Son of Satan. Is he pastor? Yes, sir. Look at first, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. What is the Antichrist called? The Bible says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The Antichrist, who is he called? Son of perdition. He's the Antichrist. Yes, Satan has a son. And that's the Antichrist. But guess what? God's not done. Look at 1 John. Look at 1 John. Why is it that you will be a son of Satan too? Ooh, look at this man. Look at the book of 1 John. And we will read, I believe, chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> we will read verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and this is what that spirit of Antichrist, where have ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Look at that. Those who deny Jesus Christ, he is considered to be what? He is part of the Antichrist. He is part of Antichrist. How about that, man? How about that? So not even physically, but spiritually as well. Look at 1 John 2.22. 1 John 2.22. Who is a liar, but he that denieth Jesus is a Christ. He is what? Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. You deny Father and Son? You know what the Bible says you are? You are that son of Satan. You are the Antichrist. <laughs> How about that? I told you everyone's going to believe me after this. Everyone believes this, is that Satan has a children, and those are lost people. And guess what God calls you? Antichrist. But hey, it carries something even farther. It's not just spiritual. It's physical too. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because the Antichrist is not a spiritual being. He's a physical being. When God called him Antichrist and son of perdition, you think that was spiritual or physical? Physical. Genesis 3.15, when Satan produced seed, you think that was spiritual or physical? In the context of that verse, it was physical. When God gave that promise to Eve, you think she took that as a spiritual seed or physical? But, let's look at something, one more golden nugget now. <laughs> look at Genesis 4. Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4. This would be very interesting to make sense then. Look at Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. <clears throat> and Abel, Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, let's assume, let's assume this. Let's assume that when Eve had some sexual encounter with Satan, that when Eve produced children, one of, one of the children that came out through the serpent seed... If we were to take Cain and Abel, who would you think would be the one of Satan and the one of, of the right seed? Would it be Abel or Cain? Abel would be the right seed, but Cain would be the wrong seed, right? But let's think about this, which is pretty interesting right here. Cain and Abel's birth, you got to understand this. They were not separate births. They were a twin birth. You might say, well, why is that mentioned, Pastor? Because look at right here, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife. That means a sexual encounter, right? A one-time sexual encounter with Eve. What happened? The second, she bare Cain. But look at verse 2. <clears throat> and, meaning a connection. See, it's continuing. And, what? Adam sexually encountered his wife? No, she bare again. Abel. 
See that? So let me repeat it. <clears throat> Verse 1. Adam knew Eve his wife. They had a sexual encounter. Through that sexual encounter, keep reading verse 1, she bare Cain. She brought forth a child. So through knowing sexual encounter, she brought forth children. But verse 2, it does not mention he know his wife. It just says he bore. Uh, she bore, excuse me. Eve bore Abel. But not only that, it says and, verse 2. It's connecting. She, so basically, look, if the Bible says a sexual encounter once, sexual encounter once, new. And then if the Bible says she bare, and it's mentioned twice, come on, what does that mean then? If you have one sexual encounter and you bring forth two children, what does that mean? That means twins. Twins. But if Eve, if Eve had a sexual encounter with Satan, and that one of those children is from Satan, then you know what? Th that is scientifically supported as superfecundation. Basically, twin births from two different fathers. You know what Eve thought? Verse 1, she thought this guy, I would gotten a man from the Lord. But what did 1 John, go back to 1 John, what did 1 John say? Look at 1 John. So we can take this as spiritual, but it could be that it's something more than spiritual. It could be physical. Look at 1 John, chapter 2, uh, 3, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Not as Cain, look at this, who was of that wicked one. So when that verse says Cain is of Satan's seed, it could be, really means that. It could really mean he was literally part of Satan's children right here. So the thing is this. One, we do know there is no doubt, there is absolutely no doubt, in that Garden of Eden, God considered it sexual. God undoubtedly considered it as sexual. So, through this sexual transaction, that's why Satan has children, lost people. So, we can see that. The second thing, we do believe Satan has a physical seed. There is absolutely no doubt Satan has a physical seed. Number three, could be, could be, Cain, through this twin birth, was a literal son of Satan. Number four, Satan does literally have a son, and that's the Antichrist. And if you're not saved, you are that Antichrist, and you are the son of Satan in this video. That title fits you.